I feel like there has always been a lack of representation for the market here mm-hmm. in this town, especially. And at the time in general, I didn't see a lot of females standing up for the cannabis industry. So I decided to take the route of CBD because I had tried it for myself, for my my mm-hmm. eczema and then my back issues. And so it was something that I truly believed in. You just heard Carly O'Connor, owner of Quartz Trading Co. Carly is passionate about educating and guiding her community through natural options for healthy and comfortable living. Her journey began in 2012 when she learned about the benefits of CBD and pain. She researched and thought of non-invasive ways to bring a product to the market, even one that your grandma wouldn't fear. She is here to break the stigma around cannabis and all the beautiful benefits. With years of research and experience, she has been able to help so many with quality CBD products and more recently with new tropics and adaptogens. She is that CBD girl. In today's episode, we talked about the CBD industry and what CBD stands for. We talked about the challenges in the CBD industry and why Carly left her corporate job to work in the CBD industry. We talked about how you can find her locally and her different products that she offers. And lastly, we spoke about the nonprofit event she's having on Black Friday. Welcome back to the Our Two Cents podcast, the show where your local professionals sit down with an array of guests to hear their story and impart some wisdom for both business and life-improving skills. This is your place to hear business and community leaders discuss relevant topics that matter to you. Welcome to the show today. My name is Amanda DiGiacomo, and I will be your host. Before we get into today's episode, I would like to encourage our listeners to follow us on all social media platforms. Carly, we are happy to have you joining us today. Thank you for being here. I can't wait to get into some of our topics today. Before we start, can you tell me what CBD stands for? Of course. Thank you. Happy to be here today. Um, CBD stands for the word cannabidiol. And yeah, it's found in the hemp plant. Awesome. So what I was kind of reviewing, you know, for this podcast, CBD is a compound found in marijuana or hemp. And it's often, even though it comes from those items, it doesn't really cause like a high. Mm -hmm. I know there's a stigma around that, that like, oh my gosh, it comes from marijuana and like it has to get you high. Can you talk a little bit about like that stigma, people like thinking that, oh my gosh, it's CBD, I'm doing marijuana. Yeah. So that is a huge misconception. Um, CBD is actually one of over 113 compounds found in both hemp and marijuana. THC is what we know is the compound that gets us the high. So the stigma definitely relates all over the the THC, but the education lacks in the community. So that's kind of why I'm here to help educate people on the difference between CBD and THC. Right. And I used to be one of those people before I started using your products. I also was like, oh no, like this has to have like THC in it or something and I can't, I'm going to get high. And I I was also scared until I think I had that initial phone call with you. You spent like 15 minutes on the phone with me telling me what CBD was and that like what my body would feel like. And it's not really side effects, but the effects of what the CBD will actually help and do, which is really cool. But for myself, I also was one of those people. I just wasn't educated on it until I had that conversation with you. And I was like, well, why am I not doing this? Yeah, I have to have that conversation all the time Mm -hmm. just because people, you know, they think that they're going to get high. And then when they try CBD and they don't, they are like, oh, it's not working. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you have to definitely educate the people on what to expect they're going to feel and what they're not going to feel. Right. I love that. So CBD is used in foods, it's used in oils and lotions and cosmetics, and it's actually used for a lot of like health benefits. Um, And when I was doing some of my research on it, it says it can treat anxiety, um, sleeping disorders, pain, and then seizures. So can you talk a little bit about the health benefits of CBD? Yes, definitely. Um, All the things you listed, yes, we've seen results with, and then even skin conditions. Um, It's Personally, with me, I have eczema, and mm-hmm. so I use it tons of times on my eczema um, to help it, the inflammation. Mm-hmm. And um, as far as anxiety, I feel like that's one of the most common reasons why people turn to CBD. Uh, cannabis in general has been known to treat anxiety, but I think the THC definitely gives people more mm-hmm. anxiety. So um, that's why people often switch to CBD because it's non-invasive. You don't have any intoxicating effects and um, it can help relieve that as well as any pain you're feeling too. So you kind of have multiple things that you can treat with it versus medicines Mm -hmm. um, that doctors prescribe. You know, there's side effects, 
there's here, take this medicine to treat the side effect from this medicine. Right. And with CBD, you know, you're, you, it's like an umbrella for multiple um, conditions. So you can use that and feel the benefits for all kinds of things. Yeah, that's great. And my own personal story to this is, I mean, I know Carly from the community. She's a client of mine, but also I use her products. Like I mentioned earlier, I was diagnosed with stage four endometriosis and right. a lot of other side effects that were it's very severe pain. I had a seven centimeter mass. I was smashing pretty much all my insides and I like came crying to you and I was like, you know, I don't want to do weed. I don't want to do painkillers. Like, yeah. what are my options? Like, is this going to work? Like, I was naive. I thought it was going to get me high. Right. And then you, you know, you talk to me and you're like, no, like, I think this will help you. Like, you pretty much gave me like, you know, a little period kit of stuff, which yeah. is really cute. And you were like, here, like, use this and like, tell me how it was. And it wasn't until I started using like your CBD products. I was like, oh, this really does help and relax and help the pain. And mm -hmm. obviously it didn't get rid of all the pain because the right. pain was so severe and that I had to have surgery but it did help it where it was bearable for me to like at least get through the day on items that's amazing um so i'm a personal user of like your cbd products and i do think that they have you know health benefits in my opinion yeah and and you touched on the pain medications and that's something that i try to explain to people all the time you know you're taking a medication that's going to get you Hi, mm -hmm. um, or a lot addicted, of, and especially addicted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your body gets way addicted to those, and I think that is something that is kind of funny to me. But also, you know, I have grace for people and have to explain. You know, like you're going to get a medicine from a doctor that's going to get you high. You mm -hmm. can get addicted to, and this is completely natural, mm -hmm. and you're not going to get addicted to it. There's there's no way you can get addicted to CBD. Right. Maybe dependent. I don't know mm -hmm. because it works so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that, but yeah, it's not, it's not an addictive thing. No. And I know that the FDA just recently approved a, a medication that's derived from CBD for seizures. Um, are you familiar with that? Yes. Epidolex. Awesome. Yeah. I believe it's a synthetic version mm -hmm. of hemp that they, that they formed, um, but it is CBD ultimately. And it is approved by the FDA to, yeah. to, to treat seizures. Which is awesome because that's, I feel like it's a step going forward in like that industry. I'm like, hey, how can we use this to help? And they found a yes. way. It'll be interesting to see what this does for big pharma mm -hmm. um, and what other things they might start to approve. Right. We'll see. So, you know, CBD for the listeners listening, it was actually illegal until 2018. It wasn't until like a farm bill that passed in 2018 that allowed, you know, CBD to even be sold in the U.S. And since then, like the industry has sold 4.6 billion in like sales from that. Obviously, there are challenges because one, the the stigma behind like you're going to get high, but right. also there was other regulations until recently that like you weren't really allowed to sell over the counter and you were selling over the counter and the testing and the safety of it. And then it was really hard for mom and pops or people who were producing it like yourself to get funding from banks, to be able to get commercial real estate to rent from. So can you talk about some of the challenges you faced as being, you know, a manufacturer of the CBD? Yes, my challenges started day one. <laughs> yeah. Making the decision to start a CBD business was definitely not easy, it being illegal, because when I started, it was 2016. So mm -hmm. the t 2018 Farm Bill hadn't even been written yet. So I chose to choose a name that wasn't really obvious. Mm -hmm. And I think that actually helped me a lot um, because people didn't know. I mean, it's quartz. Right. So they didn't think CBD or marijuana. Mm -hmm. So it definitely gave me the ability to talk to people about it without them being afraid. And right. that was just one of the challenges. But since then, there has been so many with payment processing, doing local pop-up markets, like being part of the community, lots of no's, lots of right. we can't have this here. And just generally trying to get my product anywhere was always way harder than right any other product without CBD. Yeah. So like I said, she's a client of mine and I remember like her and I having conversations about like, oh, well, I'm going to apply for application to get payment process. So payment promise processing is like Square or Stripe or like, you know, they have card readers and things like that's what we mean by that. And like she was having trouble even like getting accepted to be able right. to like 
get paid for her products because they were like, oh, CBD, no. And then I also remember us, you know, several months later having a conversation because you were trying to find a brick and mortar. And a lot right. of people were denying your application because they were thinking it was marijuana they were selling and marijuana in Kern County, even though it's legal in the state of California, Kern County, it's illegal. So it's, you know, you were facing that too, trying to find right. a place. Well, and a lot of companies or brick and mortars that mm-hmm. are CBD, they say they're CBD. They're not really, they're dispensaries for mm-hmm. marijuana. So, or they're just smoke shops and, you know, they bring a different crowd. And right. I think that's also a huge difference between the CBD industry and marijuana is like, mm-hmm. We actually have professional people and it's right. not just, you know, gangsters off the streets trying to sell things. Right. So it's different. I have to sit in front of landlords and not big, but definitely be interviewed and mm-hmm. they have to get to know who I am. And even then I would still get no's just because the lack of education ultimately. Yeah. No, I understand that. And and like I said, we, we faced it working alongside you. Yeah. Like, how are we going to work through this? Like, you know, who can we call upon to help get her funding? Who can we call yeah. upon to help you get commercial, like renting brick and mortar places? And, and honestly, word of mouth and mm-hmm. relationships, networking, like that was huge for us because people to vouch for us and, you know, say that we're not one of those dispensaries was, I think, the thing that got us in. Right. Awesome. So in in 2021, there was an act that was approved, you know, by the government that made CBD officially a dietary supplement. Um, And and due to that, that allowed a lot more freedom for you guys to sell things, get funding and kind of do other things. But with that comes, now you have a flood of people trying to rush into the industry. And with that, you can sometimes lose the quality or the organicness of the product. So I would like you to talk a little bit about what people should be asking from their CBD producers and what they should be looking for to make sure that they're getting that it's safe. They know that it's tested. They know that it is organic, that it, it, you know, it isn't just something that it's coming from like a big, like, let's just say Walmarts are going to start selling CBD now. I think they already do. Yeah. Actually. So, you know, can you give us and the listeners some idea what they should be looking for to educate themselves on the proper CBD? Definitely. Buying CBD is challenging because there's so many companies out there. But one thing you can definitely look at is their website and looking for lab testing to make sure that they have that. Um, We have to remember this is an unregulated market. So even that can be confusing. And a lot of companies won't teach you how to read a lab test and what that even means. So, Mm -hmm. you know, you see that third party lab testing and you get excited, but then you can't even find the test. A lot of companies can just say things like that. So honestly, the best way to find a CBD product is, is looking locally, looking on social media, looking for people who are actually marketing their own products um that's huge because gas stations sell it walmart i think actually does and cvs Mm -hmm. and grocery stores and even those products are not always the best they're low milligram they're very expensive and they're mass produced mass produced with ingredients that are you know not as safe yeah and and one thing we want to be looking for is where the hemp is grown the hemp can be grown anywhere in the world Mm -hmm. and we know our soil is really 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 nice for that and really rich Mm -hmm. and when you get it from places like asia it's not as good a quality you have a lot of heavy metals Mm -hmm. and things of that nature that you don't really want in your body so you know just looking where the hemp is derived if it's organic or not Mm -hmm. and ultimately all the just like any other product what kind of other ingredients are they including because a lot of those big companies will say proprietary blends or they'll have ingredients in there that you can you can't pronounce right. so <laughs> that's just something common with any product you want to be watching out for yeah that's great advice now I'm, I'm interested like you know I know you worked a corporate job before this but what made you leave that corporate job to work in the CBD industry yeah not money <laughs> 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 honestly I am a very passionate person and I didn't want to live a life without purpose. Mm-hmm. I really needed to feel fulfilled and I don't like doing the same thing every day. I don't even like eating the same meal every day. Mm-hmm. So um, I needed something that was going to keep me on my toes and something that was really going to help people because that's always that's also something I've been passionate about is, is helping people. Originally, I went to school to help children, which I actually still get to do with this. But yeah, I get to help people every single day. Yeah. Can you give me some examples of like how you've been able to help people? Definitely. Um, 
a lot of my customers are patients with lots of chronic pain, like fibromyalgia, even anxiety, mm-hmm. and they're prescribed medicines that are dangerous to our body, like we were talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. And with our products, the quality that, that we put into it, they've been able to either stop taking those medicines or cut them in half or just taper down, which, right. which is really nice for them because of all the side effects that they feel. Side effects, costs, everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And some people aren't even mobile. You know, I'm not telling you CBD is a one size fits all. It's going to help anything you, ailment you have, but it definitely has helped so many people and we've seen it before our eyes and right. it's, it's a beautiful thing. I do feel like a common denominator with a lot of the things that it treats is mainly um, diseases with inflammation. Yeah. I feel like, so if, if you kind of have one of those diseases that have that type of element, I do feel like CBD products can help other than dieting and other things that, you know, helps reduce down inflammation as well. But that's what I've seen in my personal story and then talking to other people as well. Yeah. Yeah. Inflammation is definitely the goal of CBD. Um, overall maintaining homeostasis, that's mm-hmm. the purpose of CBD. And so, it's been able to keep that down. But then with the anxiety, right. that's also been huge because a lot of people don't want to take medicine for that. And yeah. Even if they are on medicine or prescribed, like they, they feel groggy, they don't like yeah, it, it, or they don't want to have marijuana. Because I know nowadays, especially in California, since it's legal, you can get a marijuana card. Yeah. But then but that, that still it's, has, yeah. It's so strong. Mm-hmm. And I, and I, in my experience, that triggers anxiety even more. Right. Not me personally, but like mm-hmm. a lot of people who don't use cannabis in general, Right. You know, they can't be thrown into a product like marijuana. Mm-hmm. Um, that's opening it for a bad experience. And yeah. then, you know, you risk them not wanting to try CBD after that. Yeah. I mean, it, it's so true. You know, I would like to get a little more about you and, you know, your company. Um, so I know you're female owned, you're USDA organic certified. So tell me a little bit about your journey of how you opened up the business and, you know, a little background of like who Quartz Trading Co. is. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so it really began early 2012. I decided with with some friends we were going to open up a medical marijuana dispensary Mm -hmm. um, because I wanted to check all my boxes with helping, being fulfilled, yada, yada, yada. And that did not work out. But one thing that really came from that is that's where I learned about CBD. I knew that's something that I needed to tell people about. I feel like there has always been a lack of representation for the market here Mm -hmm. in this town, especially. And at the time in general, I didn't see a lot of females standing up for the cannabis industry. So um, I decided to take the route of CBD because I had tried it for myself, for my my Mm -hmm. eczema and then my back issues. And so it was something that I truly believed in. Mm -hmm. And that's what gave me the opportunity to really pursue it. Um, and it's been challenging, you know, to, to find quality products since then, but I started by looking for farms and finding certified organic farms of that. And as close to California as I could get really, but at the time it's always Colorado. Right. That's been the challenge I think is, is finding the connections and networking and making sure you're getting the right products and everything, you know, under that. But mostly learning how to make products was a challenge. I wanted to bring the market something that was non-invasive, something that you wouldn't be afraid of, something nobody would be scared to try. And so that's when I chose the bath bomb because it was something that I like to use. Right. Um, self-care is huge. And I started to learn more about how important that is for our bodies and minds. Yeah. So I learned how to make a bath bomb and I started perfecting it and putting CBD in it and... Then my bath bomb was born. Which I love her bath bombs. You can't see it because, you know, we're in the studio right now. But if you're paying attention on our social media, we'll have a cute little reel on there of what her bath bombs look like and what they do. But she puts a uh, quartz crystal in every single bath bomb. So when you're done using it, you're left with this crystal. And then on her website, she has like what the crystal means and like what it can bring to you. I collect every single one that I use. And I love it, like little collection and, and my little uh, bathtub cute. of all your little quartz. But again, that's so, why the name, it comes in. In. It's it's right. it's great marketing, and I thought you know I was I'm really into crystals and the energy that they give you and all the healing powers that they also have. Not saying you know that that's totally what they do, but mm-hmm. for me, you know, I believe in it. And quartz is actually the most abundant of all crystals, mm-hmm. and so I thought, how cool! Hemp is the most abundant can- cannabinoid of mm-hmm. the hemp plant, um, which we didn't touch on that word. Cannabinoid is what a compound 
in the hemp plant is. Okay. So um, I thought that that was a really cool, equal thing that they had in common. So I decided quartz. That's what we were going to name this this business. And originally it was just the bath bomb, but I knew we had to get it ingested in your body because we actually have receptors Mm -hmm. in our body and uh, we have a endocannabinoid system. Mm -hmm. And that system is already making these compounds. So ultimately we're supplementing that system, which is why it helps us so much. And so um, I started to play around and do a a lot of research on how we could do that. Um, The easiest, most simple way with, you know, not a lot of ingredients. And that's when I started formulating a tincture. Yeah, before we get into into some of your other products, um, let's go back to the bath bombs. And can you just tell me a little bit of like what type of bath bombs you kind of have and like uh, scents and I don't I don't want to say flavors, oh, yeah, but definitely type of um, bath bombs you have. And then we can go into some of the other products. We currently have eight main scents of bath bombs. Um, so for me, I love using essential oils. I know a lot of companies use fragrances, which Mm -hmm. aren't always the safest for our skins. And so, um, I chose to use essential oils and not just basic ones. I like to make blends, Mm -hmm. um, because you can combine different essential oils to help you in different ways. Um, as, as you may know, like eucalyptus is antifungal, it's distressing. So I kind of choose um, similar essential oils that go together Mm -hmm. that kind of have the same purpose. And that's how I start with my blends. And so uh, we have the Relieve here, Mm -hmm. which is one of my favorites. And this one has a blend of orange, which is good and uplifting. Mm -hmm. And then it has lavender, which is relaxing. And then the eucalyptus, which is um, also good for de-stressing and pain. Right. So together they work and bring a really nice scent to the bath. And as you said, you're sensitive, your skin's sensitive and my skin's sensitive. And like I've been using your bath bombs and like I never get hives or rashes or anything right. because you do use natural organic products in yeah, it. Quality ingredients mm-hmm. down to, I mean, even the citric acid that we use, like everything inside of the bath bomb minus the essential oils you can ingest ultimately. That's so cool. So now you you did uh, mention other products, you know, let's kind of go into those. I know you have um, oils for dogs and cats. You mentioned the tincture, uh, you have topical creams, you have gummies. You want to talk about a couple of your other products that you have and this benefits? Sure. Um, yeah, we have a lot now. I think Last time I counted, it's like over 47 different products. Wow, that's awesome. I know. And everybody, every company is just like, whatever we can put CBD in, we're going to do that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But I try to stick to products that I want to use for myself, Mm -hmm. um, products that I'm passionate that I know will work. And so uh, one product I definitely want to talk about is the lotion. Yeah. I personally really like using lotion just Mm -hmm. in general. So um, to have a lotion with CBD in it, that is remarkable. Plus, I get to put a lot of other ingredients in it, like jojoba oil Mm -hmm. and aloe aloe vera and shea butter and things that are also very nourishing to our skin. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the CBD that's helping. It's all of the ingredients that are included with it. Yeah. And so we try to keep everything as natural as we can. That one's awesome. I also have that one. I use that (laughs) all the time. Uh, And I know you have like roll on, um, like freeze roll on stick that you have too. Yep. Yep. It's similar to like a biofreeze type product Mm -hmm. where it has the cold therapy. And so one thing about our products, it's not one product to treat everything. Mm -hmm. Like if you tell me your back hurts, I know to go to this one. If you tell me your foot hurts, I know to go to that one, Mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So that freeze roll on application is really nice for back pain, um, really nice for, for neck pain, Mm -hmm. for knees, things like that, that you know, you need to isolate the pain and just kind of freeze it away. Yeah. Now you mentioned the word um, tincture. Am I saying it right? Tincture. 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 Wait, tincture. People always think See, I'm I saying like even... t-shirt. <laughs> so like me, myself, I don't even know. Like what is that? I'm sure the listeners don't. A lot of people refer to them as drops. Okay. So I feel like if you don't know what a tincture is, you mm-hmm. might've heard of that. Okay. And so that's something you apply sublingually, which means under your tongue. Okay. And we have glands that are under our tongue mm-hmm. that can absorb the oil and help it get into our uh, bloodstream. And that's where we want to get the CBD so that it, so that it helps with the inflammation. 
And I was like, daily or like, how do you do the drops daily? Can you put it in food? That's Does it have really to be underneath question. underneath your tongue? I think a lot of people think you can just take it once and it works, mm-hmm. but it's definitely something you want to do daily. We talked about the endocannabinoid system mm-hmm. and it's just like protein. Like you can't eat a protein bar one time and expect to have muscles. Right. You know, we got to look at it very similarly to that. It's mm-hmm. supplementing our system. So over time, the more you pr- put it in your body, the more supplementation we get, the better it's going to work. So can you put it in like your morning coffee you or can. do you have to put it directly on the tongue? You can. So there's forms of CBD that are water soluble. Mm -hmm. And so if you had that form, they also refer to it as nano CBD. That being water soluble, you would be able to put into a drink and you'd get similar absorption. But with oil products, it is best to put it directly into your mouth or directly onto your skin because you will lose some. It'll cling to the side of the cups Mm -hmm. um, and then it will just go directly down your throat, which your organs or your um, intestines then begin to absorb some of it. Yeah, awesome. So you lose some absorption that way. Okay. I mean, I think that's really good for listeners to know because I didn't understand like what that product was. Yeah, I think knowing that there's different types of CBD Mm -hmm. is really important when you're like looking to buy your CBD products Mm -hmm. because there's CBD isolate, which is isolated, the compound itself, CBD. Mm -hmm. There's broad spectrum, which is going to include the CBD plus other compounds in the plant. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I said there was 113 or more of those compounds. Right. So a broad spectrum, mm-hmm. a full spectrum, those are going to include other parts of the plant and even terpenes, which is another compound that ultimately helps you too. Right. And they work really well together. So having the presence of multiple cannabinoids mm-hmm. is is honestly the best form of CBD you can get. Um, you did mention you have oils for dogs and cats. Now, you know, I have Milo, my little mm-hmm. dog. Everyone knows little Milo, our, our mascot, Atlas over here. <laughs> but that that's something that like, oh, well, I can buy for me and my dog. Or can you tell, I guess, what some of the benefits are for the oils for the dogs and cats? Yeah, there are products out there that are just for dogs. I think ultimately it's not it's not necessary you could definitely buy a product that you could use and the dog Mm -hmm. tinctures are are usually really beneficial because you can put them directly into the dog's mouth Mm -hmm. Um, you can also put it on a dog's food sometimes it's hard to get them to drink the oil directly so um, it's really beneficial to them they also have the endocannabinoid system in their bodies Mm -hmm. and them being so much smaller than us honestly i think it works better in dogs and cats in my in my experience no Is it anxiety that it's treating in the dogs and cats or like what is it treating in the dogs and cats? Anxiety and inflammation. Okay. Just like, just like with us. And a lot of times, you know, a dog is, they get old and they. Arthritis. Yeah. The arthritis, their their hip Mm -hmm. pain. I think that's something that's really common in dogs is, is the joint pain in the hips. Right. And with CBD, I mean, we can see them get up and down, whereas before they, they could barely get off their bed. And yeah. I personally give it to all of my dogs. I have four, mm-hmm. four. <laughs> four. And um, I think with my late dog that just passed in March, I think she had a good two or three years more of life than she would have if she didn't have CBD. Right. That's so cool. So I know uh, listeners out there, like this is also a product that you can give to your animals who are sometimes more family than family. So oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it's comforting. I mean, you want to keep them comfortable even if they're on their way out. Right. And um, when they have cancer, I mean, we can't afford chemo usually, yeah. unfortunately, because mm-hmm. they're always on their way out anyway. So yeah. it's like, what do you do just to get them comfortable? And, and CBD is definitely an affordable option right and will significantly help them yeah i know that it's used commonly too around fourth of july for the fireworks yes to yes. help with anxiety and the loud noises so that's definitely something that if you haven't listeners used this before if your dogs suffer from like i don't like the fireworks and they end up having anxiety this is something that mm-hmm. you can reach out locally and you know and try some of our products to see if it works during yes, that time definitely And I would always look for a broad or a full spectrum product for those cases for any inflammation or anxiety in the pets. Mm -hmm. um, Those seem to do work the best for them too. Great. Now we talked a little bit about brick and mortar and we mentioned that you were having a hard time, you know, finding a place, Mm -hmm. but good news. uh, We did find a place. (laughs) Um, So let's talk about, cause you just opened later this summer. It's a new location. So, you know, let's tell the audience where you're at and you know what you have at your shop and when your hours of operation are. Yeah. So this has been my goal for, gosh, I think 10 years now, I 
was sitting at State Farm and I told my boss, like, I want to have a holistic boutique. Mm -hmm. And finally find, finding this brick and mortar, um, which is off of Buck Owens and Select. If you're not familiar with that area, it is across the street from the Bakersfield Heart Hospital mm -hmm. um, under the iconic Bakersfield sign. I kind of have to give all the details. The de <laughs> yeah, and that kind of helps people like, oh, that's where it's at. But yeah, it's it's amazing to be able to have that space mm -hmm. to not just sell my products, but also other products that I'm passionate about. So I've been able to yeah. expand my options mm -hmm. into uh, nootropics and like mushroom products, mm -hmm. superfood mushrooms, which I think is the up and coming thing that we are starting to look to, to treat energy issues, mm -hmm. um, get off coffee and also help with, with cognitive function and, yeah. and gut health and whatnot. That's so great. So yeah, if you go to her location, I mean, she sells these products online, but she also sells it at her brick and mortar. And then if you go there, they have this really cool, like double mirrored thing where you can kind of see them like producing the oh, yeah. bath bombs in the back. So it's yeah. a really cool uh, location. So if you have time, uh, w will you give the direct address? Oh, yes. It's 3101 North Select Avenue, Suite 103. Yeah, or you can Google uh, you Quartz can Google Trading us. Co. And they're on there as well. But yep, they're open. a local female-owned organic company here. Mm -hmm. um, you can buy online or you can buy, you know, at their brick and mortar. Um, so, you know, uh, we've met in things. Uh, you participate in a, local, a, a lot of local pop-up events and things. You want to mention a couple of upcoming pop-up events that you might be in or, you know, wh where they can find you in the community? Yes. So we used to do you know, almost one a month, maybe more, but we've kind of tapered it down a little bit. Um, the main ones we've been doing lately are the collective markets. Mm -hmm. And then that one's off of Weegis. And then um, the one that's coming up this weekend is Marion Bright, mm -hmm. which is at the Community Living Center for Older People. Mm -hmm. uh, Sunnyvale, I believe it's called. That's off of Ming and Stein. Okay. I think that's what it's called. I do think it's called that. Yeah. 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 I know it's sunny something. I think, yes, yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's Sunnyvale. Yeah, it's a really great location, though. There's going to be over 100 vendors at that one. And then the collective market I just mentioned has another one coming up in December that will be at December 3rd. Awesome. I would like to know because, you know, I follow you on social media and I saw you recently post the other day that you're having this event where people can drop off items that you're donating for a good cause. Do you want to talk a little bit about that cause? I'd love to. Yes, we have the opportunity to partner up with a, a local nonprofit called the Open Door Network, and they're partnered with the Alliance Against Family and Health or Family and Violence, mm -hmm. I believe it's called. And so I'm really passionate, like I said, about helping people, kids, and um, these are people who are victims of abuse any kind of violence and so we are collecting winter clothes all sizes i believe mm -hmm. and for all ages and yeah we're going to be collecting it all of november and then on november 25th black friday we'll be hosting a pop-up market at our um at our shop where people can come and donate then if they can't make it throughout the month mm -hmm. and we're going to have some vendors um i think we're going to have some food and definitely Black Friday sales we do every year. Awesome. So just repeat that throughout November, you can go to her location and drop off any, is it gently used or new? Gen yeah, gently, gently used, used would be Used ideal. or new clothes. Um, shoes too. Shoes, blankets, any of those type things. Mm -hmm. Um, and then on Black Friday, they're going to have a big vendor event uh, where there's Black Friday deals. But also, if you have donations, make sure you bring it to that event. Definitely. Awesome. Um, so we kind of philanthropy. Yeah. I mean, that's how you do it, especially around the holidays. I think that that's what is amazing about this community. I feel like what's the point of having a business if you're not going to do stuff like I that? I agree. You know, a hundred percent. Yeah. Where I overextend myself, to be honest, sometimes because I'm always offering help or like, oh yeah, I'll do this or oh yeah, I'll be a part of that or yeah. I'll be on your committee or I'll do this. Um, no, but you're great. It looks amazing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and it's like, it motivates me to get out there mm -hmm. and like network myself more and get more involved with, right. with helping more people. Yeah. <laughs> So we do, you know, rapid fire here at the end. And these are just kind of fun questions that we get to know you a little bit more and the audience get to know you a little bit more. Um, who would you say is your biggest mentor? Okay, so I don't think I have any one person that's my mentor. Mm -hmm. um, if there was to be somebody, it would have to be my mother because, you know, she is just a hardworking woman. And I've always looked up to her ability to work so hard. Mm -hmm. But I think at what I've really done is take what I like about a lot of different people who mm -hmm. I've looked up to 
And it kind of formulated this person that I, that I know I can be and want to be. And so ultimately like I'm my own mentor. That's awesome. (laughs) I love that. I feel like I do similar things. Like I'm like, Oh, I like that quality. I like that quality or, you know, in certain things I'm like, okay, this is what I'm gearing towards what I want to be. Yeah. And with my industry, I mean, there's like no one person I've ever been able to go to and ask for anything because there's nobody here doing what I'm doing. And it's hard to reach out to people. It's a whole different world over in this industry, but yeah. yeah. And so it's like, I have to be my own. <laughs> yeah. Your own mentor. If you could be remembered for one thing, what would it be? I think that I would like to be remembered as a compa- compassionate person, mm-hmm. an honest person. I think people can come to me and I can keep their secrets, keep their information mm-hmm. private, but also be honest with what I think can help them or not help them right. because I don't, I don't want to tell people, you know, here, this is going to save you from this because it may not. Right. So I think that's one thing that I pride myself on and that I'd like to be remembered for is being honest. Uh, What's a common myth about your field of expertise? Okay. I think a common myth would be that if you have a CBD company, you are going to make millions of dollars. (laughs) I think that's one thing like people Mm -hmm. may hear I own a CBD company. They're like, oh, you must be doing really. Oh, Mm -hmm. man, all that money the industry made last year. You must be making tons. Right. And it's a saturated market. It's not easy. That's what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Yeah. People who are, you know, mass producing it, which is cutting down on costs, like they can sell it at a, a lower rate. And then they also put you know, cheaper materials in it, which isn't as healthy for the you right. know, consumers. Uh, but then they well, can sell it cheaper because it's cheaper ingredients. Yes, that and there's a lot of people, you know, like me who wanted to be involved in the industry. Mm-hmm. I think I got in way earlier than a lot of these people, obviously. But yeah, they I think they just do it just to do it. And they don't right. have the passion yeah. or the will to actually help people. It's mm-hmm. just like money driven. Right. And that's not always the, the right best, way, yeah. but it does work for people. Like mm-hmm. the saying, nice guys finish last. Right. Like, or it scares people away from your industry because like they might, let's just say I went to somebody else instead of you first on CBD and oh, yeah. they didn't explain the benefits mm-hmm. or they gave me a product that, you know, made give, gave me highs or, or did something to make me not feel well. And yeah. I would have been like, nope, never doing CBD ever again. I'm kind of the cleanup crew in yeah. that way because <laughs> mm-hmm. so many people that happens to, they're like, yeah. They're, I don't know, afraid to like go into a shop and buy it, I Mm -hmm. think is, is what's happening. And so they just get something online or like Mm -hmm. when they're out at the gas station, they just grab it and then they have a bad experience or it didn't work. And so I have to be like, no, here's all these reasons why it didn't Mm -hmm. work. Here's how it works. And here's a good product versus a not so good product. And Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I have to clean up their whole mindset. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I appreciate you coming onto the podcast today and, you know, I appreciate our friendship and, you know, you turning me on to CBD products and it, like I said, it's helped my life and that's one of the main reasons I wanted to have you on here is like, I'm sure there's other listeners that aren't aware of the CBD, you know, health right. impacts and benefits of it. Right. And finding good quality, mm-hmm. I think is, is one thing that we've touched on a lot today. That's really important. Yeah. Cause if you, like we said, get that wrong product. Mm -hmm. There goes your whole thing. (laughs) Well, again, thank you so very much. Yes. Thank you for having me. It's been fun. This show has been brought to you by the law office of Kyle Jones, Troy Burton with the Lynn company, CPA, John Duffield, Scott Hansen, real estate lender, broker and investor, Dave Plivlich, president and CEO of the Marcom group and marcombranding.com and Amanda DiGiacomo, president of Atlas Financial Solutions. You've been listening to the Our Two Cents podcast. Check out the show notes for links and more information about the show. Also visit our website at OurTwoCentsPodcast.com or catch us on Instagram at Our Two Cents Podcasts. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and share with others. 